What's up, YouTube? Today we're doing a full music breakdown on Babytron's whole lot of yeah. We're going it over some of the most used effects and the coolest effects, in my opinion. Breaking them down and making sure you guys know exactly how to do them. If you guys have any video suggestions, make sure you comment them down below. I read all of you guys' comments. Just want to say thank you so much for the recent support on the channel. But yeah, let's hop straight into After Effects. So the first effect I wanted to go over was a super cool title card that they used. And it's actually not that hard to do, so let's go ahead and hop into it. So to recreate this, you are going to need Video Copilot's Saber plugin. Completely free. I'll have a link to that in the description below. You can go download that. But as you can see here, I've just put the text on the screen. If you guys are wondering what font I used, I just got it off the font. It's called Melted Monster. Next, I'm going to go ahead and right click. We're going to go ahead to New and create a new solid. Now for solid settings, this doesn't matter. We're just going to go ahead and hit OK. Next, we're going to go to our effects and grab Saber and just drag this onto our new solid. And now you can see it's just got this one line down the middle. We're going to go ahead to the Saber effect controls and go to the customized core. Now we can go to core type and change that to text layer. We can go ahead and select our text layer off a lot of yeah. With the Saber plugin, we can go ahead and change things like the glow intensity. And uh, if you turn that down, you can see uh, the outline of our text. So I'm going to go ahead to the preset. I'm just going to go ahead and set it to portal. Now I'm going to go ahead to the glow intensity and decrease this quite a bit something like i don't know 45 percent that looks pretty good next we're just going to go to the glow color and change it to pink and i'm going to change it to something purple like that next we're going to go ahead and right click on this layer we're going to go to the blending mode and set it to screen see that we have our text on the bottom and the saber layer on the top and it's already looking super similar to what they had uh, we just need a few more tweaks so one thing they did was kind of have it like wiggle and stuff and we can do that super easily i'm going to grab turbulent displace and drag that onto my text layer and as you can see it makes it super wavy i'm gonna go ahead and set the amount to 30 and the size to 30 as well and uh, that just distorts it a little bit now you can see by playing with the evolution value it starts to wiggle around so i'm just going to keyframe the evolution at the start then go to where we want it to end and just drag this evolution to something like 136 now playing that back you can see that our text wiggles uh, and we just want to do the same thing for the saber so going to the beginning we're going to go ahead and copy this turbulent displace and paste it on our solid layer playing that back we've got the exact same wiggle that they had the final touch this is just going to be adding glow to our text so we can go to our effects and presets and grab the glow effect and drag that onto our text layer. I'm just going to go ahead and increase the glow radius a little bit. Maybe decrease the glow intensity because it's pretty intense right now. If you guys wanted to, we could go back to our saber and mess with the intensity, make it more intense or less intense. You could also increase the glow spread or decrease it. And there's just a lot you can do. By decreasing it, you can see it makes it more intense. Uh, around the letters and that's a little bit more similar to what they had so let's go ahead and get into the next effect the next effect i wanted to go over was this kind of like glowing trippy blur uh light ray effect and i thought it was just super cool they used it all throughout the video so we're just gonna go ahead and use this clip from the music video to recreate that super trippy effect the first step is actually gonna be duplicating the layer two times so i'm gonna go ahead and command d one and two so we've got three copies of this layer next we're gonna go to our effects and presets and grab a radial blur i'm gonna drag this on our very top layer as you can see it makes everything super trippy i go ahead to the type and set it to zoom. We're gonna go ahead and drag the amount all the way up to something super high. Something like, uh, I don't know, like 220. That looks pretty good right there. Next, we're gonna go back to our effects and presets and grab a Gaussian blur and drag that on our top layer as well. We're just gonna go ahead and drag this up to something like uh, six. And that's just going to soften up our light rays a little bit. Next, we're going to go ahead into this layer and drop down into the transform. And we're just going to go ahead and decrease the opacity to something like 50%. And as you can see, we have the beginning of that light ray effect and it looks super cool. We're going to go ahead to our middle layer and grab another Gaussian blur drag that in between. Now I'm going to go ahead and crank this Gaussian Blur super high to something, I don't know, like 34. Next, I'm going to go and drop into this effects transform. And we're actually going to increase the scale quite a bit. I'm going to increase it to something like 135. And the last bit of this is just going to be decreasing the opacity so that way it's not very prominent, something like 30. And now you can see we have that super cool blur effect uh, slash overlay effect. And this is pretty much the finished effect right here. Super cool. And you guys could go ahead and copy and paste this if you wanted to save them as presets or anything like that and just throw in your music video if you guys did want to add some extra sauce we could go ahead and animate the light rays so i'm going to go ahead to our top layer where this radial blur is and i'm just going to go ahead and keyframe the center at the very beginning now we can go ahead and click on this little icon right here and drag the center wherever we want i'm going to put it like right here and then we can just drag it throughout the clip and just move this a little bit and i just think it adds another trippy element to this effect but yeah that's it for this one let's hop into the next effect all throughout the video you can see that we have these floating bottles now i don't actually think this is vfx i think they literally tied bottles to a string and just had it swing around in set. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to create that with the power of VFX. So right here, you can see if I hide our background layer, I've just went ahead and rotoscoped out Babytron uh, for the sequence. But yeah, we can actually create some floating lean bottles with the lean effects pack. So here I've got the lean effects pack open. As you can see, we have floating objects, flag objects, etc. Just got a ton of different assets that you guys can just drag and drop on your videos. So I'm just going to go ahead and get bottle close right to and drag this onto my composition. And I'm just going to put this between my two clips. So above my background layer, but beneath 
underneath my rotoscope layer. Since it's in 4K, I'm actually gonna go ahead to the transform and decrease the scale so that way it fits the clip. Playing that back, you can see we've instantly got these 3D flying objects all around them. So to actually make this a lot more realistic, there's a few things we can do. First thing I'm gonna go ahead and grab is Tritone. And I'm just gonna drag this onto my bottle layer. As you can see, we've got the highlights, midtones, and shadows. Now you guys should definitely do this with any 3D objects that you're using, but we're just gonna go ahead and select the highlights so it looks like right here. The midtones, so something like right here. And then the shadows, so something back here. And this is just gonna color grade the bottles to the scene. And we can go ahead and mess with the blend with original mount so that way it's not completely dark, just enough so that it fits the scene. Turning that off and on, you can see that the bottles with it on definitely blend to the scene a whole lot more. We're gonna go ahead and slow down these bottles because I think they're falling a little bit too fast. Since these are all rendered in 4K60, we can go ahead and slow them down to our liking so i'm just gonna go ahead and right click and go to the time next we're just gonna go to time stretch i'm gonna go ahead and set it to a stretch factor of 200 or in half speed and i'm thinking that fits the clip a whole lot better right there next we want to make it realistic to the lighting of the scene and we want there to be shadows just go ahead and grab the drop shadow effect and drag that onto our bottle layer now just looking at the shadows of the clip you can see that baby tron's head's here and the shadows are just kind of like diagonal down like that that's what we want our uh direction to be in their drop shadow next we're just going to increase the distance until it looks pretty realistic i'm gonna go ahead and increase the softness a bit and uh, maybe decrease the opacity so it's not as harsh. And it really just makes it feel like the bottles are actually in the scene when we shot this. Now, to just to add some more depth, I actually want to add a bottle flying across the front of the screen. Going back to the lean effects pack and the flying objects, I'm just going to go ahead and grab the bottle foreground left and drag that onto our composition. Now, for the foreground, I'm going to have it on top of all of our layers. Again, I'm going to go ahead and decrease the scale so that it more fits the scene. I might actually position it so that it's up here. Next, I'm just going to go ahead and copy the tritone and drop shadow effects from the other asset and paste that onto the foreground one. So that way it blends in. I'm actually going to decrease the opacity on this drop shadow a ton. As you can see, these bottles should not be in focus like realistically with the camera. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and fix that. We're going to grab a Gaussian blur and drag that onto our foreground. And just increasing that blurriness so it looks like the bottles are actually out of focus with the camera and that Babytron is in focus. And yeah, I'm just gonna call it a finished product right there. Obviously there's a ton more you guys can do. If you guys are interested in checking out that lean effects pack, I'll have a link to it in the description below. But yeah, let's get straight into the next effect. The final effect we're gonna get over are the zoom in and zoom out transitions. Now the editor uses these a ton throughout this music video. And here I've just got an example on screen of one of these zoom in and they rotate. To start off with, I've just got these two clips that we're gonna transition between. Step one of this is actually putting your first clip on the top, second clip on the bottom. We're actually gonna go back one, two, three frames from the transition and overlap these. Next, we're going to go to our effects and presets and grab transform. I'm just going to drag this onto my top clip. Now, I'm just going to go down into the effects and transform and open up all of these keyframes. So from here, I'm just going to go back 14 frames. I'm just going to go ahead and keyframe the position, the scale, and the rotation. Next, I'm just going to go ahead to the end of this clip and increase that scale a ton. I'm going to increase it to like almost like 200, 213, leave it there. Next, I'm just going to go ahead and position and scale up to where Baby Tron's face is. That way, we're just zooming into his face. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and mess with the rotation. And I'm just going to go ahead and set this rotation to something super high, like uh, 62 degrees. Now, as you can see, we've got this black space up here, which we don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and grab motion tile. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag this on top of the transform. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and increase the output width and the output height and mirror the edges. And now you can see that black space is completely gone. Next, I'm going to go ahead and keyframe that motion blur. I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of these keyframes. Do F9 to easy ease. Or you could just right click, go to the keyframe assistant and click on easy ease. Now I actually want these keyframes to kind of be back like past the clip. So I'm just going to go one, two frames back like this and just drag these keyframes so they're actually beyond the length of that clip. And now playing that back, you can see we have the beginning of the transition, but it doesn't really look clean yet. I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of these keyframes and go to the graph editor. And here you can see the velocity uh, over time. Now for this, we really want it to be slow in the beginning and fast at the end. I'm going to go ahead and click on this yellow line, which is the position. And you'll see we get these handles down here. I'm just going to drag this hand like so so it speeds up at the end and also drag this one back like so next i'm going to go ahead to the scale and do the exact same thing the scale is the blue bring it up like that over like that and finally the rotation which is the orange going to drag it right like that and over like so now finally with this top clip we want it to fade out into the next clip so i'm just going to go ahead and keyframe the opacity right here now going one two three frames forward where it overlaps i'm just going to go ahead and set that to zero and then highlight these opacity clips and easy ease them and now you can see we have that beginning of our spin transition it looks super cool so now we're going to start working on this bottom clip and the first effect we're going to go ahead and drag on it is transform again drag that on our bottom clip and here i'm just going to go ahead and hide our top clip so we can see what we're working with keyframe the scale and the rotation now since we're zooming in we actually want this clip to be super small so i'm going to drag the scale to 
something super small like 42. For the rotation, we want it to be coming from the other direction. So I'm actually going to drag the rotation negative to something like negative 40. And again, we want to get rid of all this black space. So we're going to grab motion tile and drag this on top of our transform, increasing the output width to something like 200 just enough so that we don't see that in the height as well. And we're gonna go ahead and mirror the edges. Next, I'm gonna go ahead 12 frames. We're just going to reset the scale to 100 and the rotation back to zero. Now we're just gonna highlight both these, F9 to easy ease them. Again, open the graph editor. And this time we want it to be fast in the beginning, slow at the end. So I'm just gonna drag it to the left like so. And again, with the scale, drag it to the left and toggle that motion blur. Now you can see we have the basis of that spin transition. And honestly, I think it might be a little bit too slow. So we can go ahead and drag these keyframes a few frames back like that and honestly i might get rid of that position keyframe and yeah without that position keyframe it's looking a whole lot smoother the last thing we want to go ahead and do is just add some blur go ahead and go to new adjustment layer and here i'm just going to grab some radial blur and drag that on our adjustment layer and this is going to give us that spinny blur that we kind of want so i'm actually going to keyframe it right in the middle like here Put the amount to something like 20 go like one two three four frames back set it to zero go like one two three four frames forward set it to zero now going down into the effects radial blur i'm going to highlight these keyframes and easy ease them and now you can see we have that motion blur with the spin now in the other one it looks like they have a little bit more spin so i'm actually just going to go ahead to the rotation and increase that quite a bit to like something like 80. I'm going to go ahead and increase it on the bottom layer as well to something like negative 70. And that's just going to give us even more spin. And uh, I think that's a little bit nicer right there. Obviously, you guys should tweak it and make it your own. Don't just copy what I'm doing. I'm just trying to give you guys the basis of these transitions. I know for some transition, he's chose not to use the rotation. So we actually just untoggle that rotation on both of these and see we just have like a zoom through transition. I think that's also pretty clean. You could just leave it like that if you didn't want that rotation. But that's it for me. I hope you guys did find this video helpful. If you're new here, make sure you like and subscribe. If you want to learn the five essential transitions that you need like right here i think youtube wants you to check out this video down here make sure you follow me on instagram and join the discord and i'll see you guys in the next one later